Hi, Standers. This is Sheila Hollinger with Marriage Revealed Ministries. So glad to have you with us today. This message is going to be titled, Peace in the Storm. For some of you, you are focused on wanting that storm to go away. And that's probably the the very beginning for many. Then there's those that understand that the storm is here and it's not going away. You understand why it's here. You've come to that place. Now, now you are in a place where you're like, well, it's here. I want to find peace in the storm. And I know in my journey, I started out, you know, begging God, make the storm go away, make the storm, stop the storm. You know, when you see the scripture right in front of us here, Matthew chapter eight, where Jesus gets in the boat and he falls asleep and the storm comes and it says the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing, right? we all get in that in that very beginning we are like jesus save us we are perishing stop the storm make it go away calm the waves right but then later later you start to understand what the storm is there for it's it's designed and it's there and 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 it's scary and it's it's big and it's it's overwhelming right it's it's, it says the waves covered the boat and that's what you feel like And, but you start to understand that this storm is meant for greater, for greater than we could possibly understand. It's meant to wake people up. It's meant to shake them to their core. It's meant to get them to open their eyes, their hearts, their minds, their souls, and understand what they are doing and why they are doing it and who they are following and, and their, their vices. And, and if they're turning to people and if they're disobeying, there's, there's so many things that the storm comes for both the stander and the lost spouse, right? If you're like me, you're both lost, both lost, both following the flesh, both doing things that were so out of God's will. And the storm is, is meant to shake you and wake you up and bring a greater understanding that gets you through the narrow gate, gets you into heaven, gets you into God's will, right? So so let's get back to um, something I want to share. I remember a time in my life, it was toward the end of the storm, and I had come, I was coming to this place where I was starting to really understand what the storm meant, and why it was there, right? And like I said, it it was seven years for me. So it wasn't until the very last year that I really started to get an understanding of what this was about. And here I was, um, the details every day were just overwhelming me and bringing me to a place of utter fear, torment, despair. And I would run to my room and my posture when I was in this place of torment, great despair, great torment, was always to run to my room and lay on my bed face down and just weep and cry and and just get, you know, get real with God and, and just let him know what I was going through. And this particular time, you know, God always met me, you know, sometimes it was just a quiet piece. Sometimes it was a a word, sometimes a song. Sometimes it was just letting me cry it out. But this particular time, God um, met me in a vision. And like I said, I was absolutely in despair and agony. And all of a sudden, I was in a vision with Jesus standing in front of me. And we were out in a, in a, on a path. And there was a mountain, a great mountain in front of me. And Jesus was standing there. And out of the whole vision, what really impacted me was the night and day difference, the stark difference of how much despair I was in and how much peace he was in, how utterly full of of hopelessness I had, but he didn't. He stood before me like, and I don't want to say like he didn't have a care in the world. He did have care. And I knew he knew every inch of my situation and my circumstances, but he was handling it completely completely different than I was. I was in fear, he was in faith. I was in, you know, despair. 
and he was just in peace. And I remember in this vision that really spoke to me because I knew in the vision, I knew God, he knew everything that I was going through. He knew the ins and outs, ups and downs, and he knew everything, but yet he was handling it in such a way that I looked at him and I thought, I want to handle how I'm dealing with this like you. I was at a place in my life where I was tired of being in fear. I was tired of being, you know, I couldn't parent. I, I We had three children and I could not be a parent to them. I was tired of, of sleepless nights. I was tired of being afraid. I was tired of being emotionally drained. I was try, tired of being triggered. I had so much that I was just outright tired to the point where I even tell God, I'm done. I don't want even to be restored. I don't want any of this because I'm losing myself to this. And I was at the place where I was just so, so damaged from it, right? And I know a lot of you can relate to this where you're at a place where you no longer care so much about even restoration. You just care about being normal again. You you care about what it would be like to just wake up and not be afraid or not be crying yourself to sleep or not be desperate, right? Desperate. The desperation to just get back what you lost or, or just to hear him or some direction. And I was at that place in my life where I was now becoming desperate for peace and we often see this scripture and we focus on Jesus getting up waking up being woken up and him calming the storm and we're crying out calm our storms but I want to focus on the scripture where he was asleep he t- that t- that is so telling Jesus had such peace such calm he could sleep right through this tempest And that's almost like what I felt when we were facing that mountain and Jesus was pointing at the mountain, showing me where we were going, which didn't help me at that time. I was like, I already felt so overwhelmed, so burdened, so in despair. And it would have been great if Jesus pointed out like the the finish line. I would have loved to have seen that, but he didn't. He pointed to this huge mountain and in the vision, he was pointing at it and it didn't bother him to point at it. He didn't like, like show me like, oh, here we go, Sheila. This is, it's going to get rough. This is going to be bad. He, he just pointed at it. And then I felt the weight of the burden I was carrying and he took it from me, slung it over his shoulders like it had nothing in it, like it was just feathers. And he started to walk along. And all I can remember from this vision was how carefree. He wasn't burdened down by all the things that I was burdened down. And he showed me that we could do this, right? You can do this, but you've got to work through those things that are tormenting you. A lot of times, It's those things in our personal understanding of God, right? You know, a lot of times standards are like, does God even love me? Does God want to restore my marriage? And it's the whys. Why is this happening? It's nonsense. And there's just so many questions that if we were to truly focus on those things instead of focusing on God, take the storm. Why was Jesus able to be asleep? If we could focus on that one little thing, which is absolutely the huge thing in this whole, this whole lesson here, how could he be asleep? He had something that we need. He had faith. He had trust. He had understanding. He wasn't afraid. He wasn't afraid. Why wasn't he afraid? He had personal, intimate relationship with the Father. Perfect love cast out fear. I never understood that scripture until my storm hit. When you are so thoroughly loved and understand that love, fear can't touch you. So there's so many things that were in my life that I was afraid of because I didn't understand the love And how protecting that love can be. And so why 
could he sleep? You need to start really focusing on that. When all we want to do is beg him, stop the storm, calm the storm. We overlook the fact that Jesus was able to have peace, such peace that he just slept like a baby. And I wanted that. I got to a place in my storm where I wasn't asking him to take it away because I had been begging him for almost seven years to take the storm away. And he wasn't doing it. And there was a reason. He needed the storm to get us to a greater level of understanding of him to save our souls. He's not going to stop something if it's going to be used for greater good. And sometimes we just don't understand the greater good. And we're begging him to take away the very thing that he's using. And so start focusing on how Jesus is walking through this storm with you. How is he handling it? He has everything that we need. Everything that we we need to have to get through this storm don't be okay with being afraid don't be okay with not trusting him don't be okay with being tempted to quit start pressing in and asking him the deeper questions get your heart and your mind focused on what you are dealing with and not what your spouse is doing We become so burdened with despair and pain and agony because we just don't see another way to handle it, that we're screaming and begging and crying, God, just take it away, take it away. And he's saying, no, I'm not taking it away. I want to teach you how to go through it with me so we become more intimate where you learn to rely on me, where you learn to trust me, where you learn that you can just be at peace, where you can fall asleep with me in the middle of this storm and not have the cares and the despair and the worry and the pain and the fears. That's what he's trying to get us to do. And for some, I understand. It's like, how? I I don't know how. I don't know how to do it, but he does. And he wants to show you. And sometimes it's just getting a grip on our our thoughts and refocusing ourselves over and over and over and over, refocusing, repositioning ourselves, reposturing ourselves. Stop gossiping. Stop slandering. Put the phone down. Grab your Bible and open it up and start reading it. Sometimes we need some real self-discipline right we need to listen to that conviction when you're when you're doing things and saying things and worrying and you know you shouldn't be and you know you should be praising him but you're not you're complaining sometimes it really is about us getting a grip on our you know our lack of self-control lack of discipline sometimes we just have to cry it out we have to vent out you know vent to him first And then get a grip and start really praying, praying for ourselves. So I pray this message blessed you. I pray that you were able to to really glean a, a deeper understanding. I thank you for joining me today. And if you would like to sow a seed into our ministry, we could greatly, greatly use it. Go to our website, marriagerevealedministries.com. Go to our giving page. And I thank you for joining us today. God bless you.